In this video, we're going to explore the Electroweak Epoch. The Electroweak Epoch is one of the earliest periods in the history of the universe. There's the Planck Epoch from 0 to 10 to the minus 43. There's the Gutty Epoch from 10 to the minus 43 till 10 to the minus 36. And now it's the Electroweak Epoch from 10 to the minus 36 until 10 to the minus 12. The hallmark of the Electroweak Epoch is its name, Electroweak, and that's that from the beginning of the Electroweak Epoch until the end of the Electroweak Epoch, we have the Electroweak Force, which is a combination of two of the forces that we see in our world, the electromagnetic force and the weak nuclear force, and at a high enough temperature, those two become one, and for this period of the universe, the universe is at that high enough temperature. Let's dig right into the Electroweak Epoch. It starts at 10 to the minus 36. Prior to that, during the gut epoch, the strong force and the electroweak force were combined. That was called the gut force, the grand unified theory force, which is how the previous epoch, the gut epoch, gets its name. So right from the get-go of the electroweak epoch, you have the electroweak force alone. And the strong force is on its own, and gravity is on its own, but the electroweak force is still there as a unified force, and it's going to be there until 10 to the minus 12, the end of this period. The moment the electroweak force becomes its own, it splits off from the gut, and the electroweak epoch begins, inflation takes off. Inflation lasts until 10 to the minus 33 seconds, and inflation is a period of rapid expansion in which the universe gets its structure seated, and it gets a lot of the features that it has now. But either way, 10 to the minus 33, this impliton field decays, and it decays into the matter and radiation that we know of in our world. So let's turn to focus a little bit deeper on that. What exactly is this decay? What did the impliton field decay into? It decayed into the particles that we know about. It decayed into quarks, it decayed into gluons, it decayed into gravitons, it decayed into leptons. However, did it decay into the W and Z bosons of the weak force and the photon of the electromagnetic force? So it seems to be a little more complicated there because the weak force and the electromagnetic force are the same at that point. So perhaps there's a particle that is a manifestation of both of them at this point, but either way, I can't really say that there were photons or W and Z bosons, but there was a particle of that unified field at that point. And conventionally, you're going to hear that there were high energy photons, but high energy photons, for the electroweak period, high energy photons doesn't seem to be sufficient because Photons are electromagnetism, and electromagnetism and weak force were one at the time. However, there's something else that's missing in our story. The universe suddenly became a dense gas of quarks, gluons, and other secondary particles. Quarks and gluons are the main components of it, so this substance is called the quark-gluon plasma. But there are two other things that are missing from this model, and those are two of the things that are missing from the standard model of particle physics more broadly dark matter and dark energy. As for dark matter, it may well have come at this period too. Dark matter may also be something that decayed from the impliton field, so we would put its birth also at 10 to the minus 33 seconds. However, dark energy is a little more complicated. Dark energy may have been there beforehand, it may have just been a feature of space. It may have been part of the impliton field that didn't decay, or maybe it was part of the impliton field that decayed, in which case we would put its origin here too, but dark energy is a lot more ambiguous and we don't really know when it would have come to be. It should be mentioned though that if dark matter was born at this time, perhaps a better name for this plasma is not a quark gluon plasma, but a dark matter quark gluon plasma, or just a dark matter plasma, because that would dominate the quarks and gluons. So at 10 to the minus 33 seconds, we're in a world that's filled with a quark gluon plasma. This plasma is so hot that all of the radiation in this plasma is spontaneously producing particles, and that's what happens with radiation of a high enough energy. It spontaneously splits into particles, and their antiparticle appears, and then because it's so dense, particles and their corresponding antiparticles are running into each other all the time, those particles are then destroying themselves and annihilating into radiation back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I want to take a second to make this more comprehensible by introducing what antimatter is. Antimatter is matter. We call it antimatter only because in a certain respect it's exactly opposite to the matter that we're more familiar with, but it's matter too. It's stuff. That's what it is. To give a couple of examples, the up quark is an example of matter that we know, and that has a plus two-thirds charge. The anti-up quark will have a minus two-thirds charge, but it will be, in all other respects, exactly like the up quark. Similarly, for the electron, an electron has an antimatter equivalent, a positron. An electron has a minus one charge, a positron has a plus one charge, but in all other ways, they're equivalent. And the important thing to understand is that matter and antimatter particles are created whenever matter is created. There's no such thing as creating matter. When you create matter, you create an equal amount of matter and antimatter in all of our particle accelerator experiments. And that will lead to a very big question a little later on in our history. 
But for the moment, let's just leave it at that and recognize that the universe in this early period at 10 to the minus 33 seconds and for a while after is just radiation turning into particles and particles annihilating into radiation. So what that means is that an electron will crash into a positron creating a high energy photon and that photon has the potential to create and may very well create an electron and a positron. And that's about it. That runs through the rest of the electroweak epoch. We have this quark gluon plasma, and what marks the end of the electroweak epoch is the splitting of the electromagnetic force and the weak nuclear force, and that happens at a specific temperature, 10 to the 15 Kelvin, and that happens at 10 to the minus 12th of the first second. So that brings us to the close of the electroweak period. We're in a world of a quark gluon plasma that is in thermal equilibrium with, with radiation turning into particles and particles turning into radiation. At this point, we're ready to cast our eyes to the next era, the quark era. If you want to explore that, that's my next video. And if you want to know everything, be sure to subscribe.